One of the questions I keep getting asked on YouTube is how do I set up the rods for the big freshwater fish that we have here in Thailand? What sort of gear do I use? How do I set up the rods? And I'm going to go over that today. So keep in mind that the way that I'm setting up this rod and reel is for the big freshwater fish here in Thailand. Things like the Mekong giant catfish, the Siamese giant carp. It's a personal preference. There's a thousand different ways of doing virtually the same thing. If you've got some suggestions, things that I could be doing differently, things that other people might want to take into account, please uh, put the comments in the video description below so we can talk about that. And I'll quickly go over what I'm doing and, and why I'm doing it with these rods and reels. So starting with the rod, this is the Ryoko SKR in six foot six inches long. It's a really good, well-made, well-priced rod. You need a rod that's got a really good bit of backbone when you're fighting these big fish. I've seen guys come over from the UK with rods that have just snapped on the first Mekong. If you don't have a rod and you're thinking about buying one in the UK to bring over, I, I would say don't, just buy the rod when you get here. It's gonna be fit for purpose and it's probably gonna be cheaper as well. Um, the length of the rod is, more, is, is quite important. Um, I find myself going for rods between six foot and eight foot long. Um, the reason being is you can cast them out in the Thai fisheries a lot easier than the 10, 12 foot rods. If you've got a long rod and you're up somewhere like Bung San Ran, um, because the roof is so low there, casting it out can be really difficult. But a good quality, strong rod, um, and if you can get it, say, 8 foot long, it's going to be good for most of the parks. You'll be able to use the 10 foot rods, but it could be a bit awkward in some places. So what reels and braid should you be using when you're looking to fight the big Mekong and the big Siamese over here? Um, there's too many reels out there for me to, to advise you, but I can let you know what I'm using and then you can rate your reel accordingly. Um, this one you can't even get anymore, so I won't talk about that. Um, Akuma uh, CDX, I think it is, uh, bait runner reel. It's a good reel, loaded with 80 pound floating braid. I got a Shimano 12000D, the 12000OC as well is a really good reel and you can uh, fight all the big fish with those. And you'll see me using these a lot, I've got three of them, maybe four of them now. Um, the Akuma Azores 8000s, this, this one's loaded with 80 pound sinking braid, this one's loaded with 80 pound floating braid, that one's 65 pound floating braid. So I've got a bit of a choice when it comes to these reels. One of the first questions I ask myself when I'm setting up the rod to go fishing is do I want, do I need a shock leader? If I don't need a shock leader, I'd choose not to have one. But somewhere like Bung San Ran, where you've got all those concrete posts that are gonna snag you up, uh, putting a shock leader on is a really good idea. Uh, if the fish dives underneath and I've got a shock leader on, this is a 100 pound um, mono, I've got a good chance of keeping the pressure on and pulling the fish out. I might still be able to land that fish if the fish takes a dive under the platform and I've just got the braid on, that's going to rub up against the concrete and, and there's hardly any chance of me ever getting that back out again. Um, if I am going to use a shock leader, I'll tie it on using the FG knot. I'm not going to show how to tie knots here, there's plenty of videos, but tie, tie it on using the FG knot and I normally go with six meters of shock leader. That gives me um, the opportunity to fish at a depth of six meters if I choose to use the float. So coming down to the business end, I'll show you how I set this rig up for fishing on the bottom and then how I can quickly change this to fishing on the surface with a float. Tie on a stopper knot just with an elastic band, normally tie that on at 3 meters. 3 meters is the, a good starting point when you're fishing on the float and then you can adjust from there but generally 3 meters is a really good starting point of most Thai lakes, um, for the Mekong at least. For the carp, probably better on the bottom. So tie on the stopper knot, coming down to the, uh, the feeder end, I've got two plastic beads. I'll show you why in a minute. Then I've got the feeder. This is a weighted feeder. I like these feeders, uh, they're strong. And then I've got a little silicon bead just protecting the, uh, the knot that goes onto the swivel there. Pull, pull that over. The knot I'm using onto the swivel is the uh, blood knot, I think it's called. So now I need to explain why I've got two beads above the feeder. The reason being is 
I make my floats up with these little metal clips on the bottom of them. I think they're used for lure fishing, so you can quickly change out the lures. But I make the floats up with these on the bottom. I can then clip the float on to the leader line. I now have a float on the leader line. Cast that out, it'll sink in the water until the float hits the stopper knot and I'll be fishing however deep the stopper knot is. If I decide then I want to fish on the bottom, just bring it in and then clip the float. And now I'm back on the bottom. I don't have to cut any knots, I don't have to mess around with anything. I can go between float fishing and bottom fishing all day long, it just takes me seconds. When you buy these floats in Thailand, they come intended to have the main line just fed straight through the middle and that's fine, they work just great. But um, if I then want to take that float off and fish on the bottom, I've got to cut the line, mess around, tie new knots. If I make the floats up like this with the little metal clip on the bottom, as you've seen, I can just clip it on and off the line in seconds and go between fishing on the surface and fishing on the bottom. Get yourself some really good quality swivels. These are a brand called NT Swivel. I do like these. They're rated up to 212 kilograms, size one stroke zero. And for the feeders, uh, you can buy these in Thailand everywhere, cheap as chips. I like these ones that you can see here, the grey framed ones. These are strong. You don't find them getting broke as easy as um, the brass or the, the gold colored, colored frames. So that's how I set up the rod, um, the rod, the line. If I'm using a shock leader or not, depends on the lake. You have to just assess that yourself. Um, when it comes to the hook link, I'll show you some photos and talk you through some of the options I do when it comes to the, the hook length, the hook link. So I'll go over how to set up the floats so that you have the swivel and the clip on the bottom. When you buy these foam floats in Thailand, they're intended to have the main line going straight through the middle. If you look at the float, you'll see that it's got a little plastic tube that runs straight through the middle of the foam. You want to push that out and pull that out of the float. Once you've got the tube out of the center of the float, Find yourself a swivel that's big enough so that once the swivel gets pushed into the float, it gets stuck into the float slightly. Tie yourself on some braid, this is 80 pound braid. Feed the braid through the center of the float where the tube used to be, and then pull the swivel up into the float. You wanna pull the swivel all the way up so you've only got the bottom loop hanging out the bottom of the float. You can actually pull this up a little bit further than you see in the photo. Once you've got the swivel into the float with the braid coming through the center of the float, get yourself a chopstick and just push the chopstick down inside the float until the tip of the chopstick hits up against the swivel. Now you want to tie the braid off where the chopstick comes out of the top of the float. Do three or four wraps, three or four knots, make sure you've got a good tight knot there. And then you can just chop the chopstick off, leave a few mil, three or four mil sticking out with the chopstick so that the braid won't ride over the top. And you've set up the float now so you've got the swivel and the line going through the bottom of the float rather than through the center. Then you get yourself one of these quick release clips. Open up the mechanism of the clip and have it so that the base of the clip goes through the swivel. And there you have it, the, the float's made up. You can just clip that onto your main line, take it off your main line. You can go between float fishing and bottom fishing. And then continuing from the idea with the chopstick, you can actually just use two floats on one chopstick like you can see in the photo. And this is really useful for places like Jurassic where you have to use a, a four ounce lead weight when fishing for the predators. If you wanna fish up in the water for the predators, you need a float that can hold four ounces of lead weight up in the water. So setting up the float like this with two floats on one chopstick will hold the four ounces of lead up in the water. When it comes to making up the hook link, I like to use the knotless knot if, if possible. If I'm going for a relatively short hook link of about six inches or less, I'll take the 80 pound braid and double it over. Feed the two tag ends through the hook as if I'm gonna do the knotless knot. Wrap the two lines then around the shank of the hook making the knotless knot. Make sure that the lines don't twist or cross. You want them lying side by side by side. Once I've wrapped enough wraps for the knotless knot, I need to get the end of the line back through the eye of the hook. Obviously you need a hook with a big enough eye to be able to take the braid going through it four times. But sometimes just using a thin bit of braid as a fish wire to pull the main braid back through the loop of the eye can work well. Once I've finished making the knotless knot, I've now got a loop above the hook that I can just feed through the swivel, put the hook back through the loop and pull that down. I think this, they call this a hitch knot, it's very strong. 
I'll use this hook link for anything up to about six inches. Anything over six inches can be a bit of a problem because the two pieces of line can open up and you can get tangles and twists. Anything over six inches, I'll tie onto the hook using the nutless nut, just with one length of braid, and then tie onto the swivel using the improved uni nut. If I choose to use mono for the hook length, the thick mono of one millimeter, like a 100 pounds, 120 pounds mono, I'll tie it onto the hook using the blood nut and onto the swivel using the blood nut. I only use five twists on the blood nut because getting the big mono, the 100 pound mono to cinch down and tighten down on itself can be quite difficult. If you try and put more twists on, if you try and use the improved uni nut with 10 twists or something like that, you're not going to get the mono to cinch down properly. Less is more when it comes to the big mono. I can add a little bit of split shot to the hook length in case I want a little bit of weight to turn the hook in the fish's mouth. You can see here I've got this hook length made up with a little bit of split shot on just to try and turn the hook as it comes out of the fish's mouth. I'm using the Fudu or the FUD or the food hooks. I've heard this pronounced so many different ways, but these are pretty good hooks if you can't get the Gamagatsus. So here you can see some hair rigs that I've made up. I've tied it the same way as I've already explained. All I did differently was tie a loop onto the end of one of the lengths of braid and had that out at the back of the hook before I started. I've just put some zig rig foam on for the example here, but you could be using a boilie or bread punch or whatever you want to put on your, uh, your hair rig. So hopefully that can help you understand at least how I'm setting up the rods for the big boy fishing over here for the Mekong for the Siamese carp. As I said at the beginning of the video, there's a thousand different ways of setting up seemingly the same way for the same fish in the same lake. If you've got some ideas of how this can be improved, please leave them in the comment section at the bottom of the video. Until next time, see you soon.